Samtastic here, talking to you today about scrapping laptops. I have a Dell Latitude D600 as well as a Dell Inspiron 600M, neither of which turn on. The 600 I'm keeping around until I feel up to um, working on that. I've got a, a Latitude D610 that's got a couple of weird little issues and uh, like its wireless card is shot, causes the computer to turn off. That happened when I dropped it. And so I'm probably going to be swapping parts around, figuring out what I can do to get that to run better. But I'm not going to be working on that today. I'm going to be showing you how to take apart this Inspiron. So uh, if you happen to be one of those people that has spilled a beverage on your computer, uh, the first thing you want to do is, as quickly as possible, uh, every second counts, unplug it, take out the battery, turn it upside down so the liquid can drain back off the keyboard instead of down into your motherboard because uh, otherwise you may end up with something where it, it doesn't work. It's completely fried. If you feel up to it, then uh, after you give it a chance to dry off a little bit, you probably want to take the whole thing apart and clean out every little bit that you can before you actually try to turn it back on. And so, uh, yeah, this thing's, this thing's totally shot, but there are a couple of parts in it that probably still work. Um, the RAM probably still works because it's going to be on the bottom of it and it's unlikely that whatever liquid was in there flowed all the way to the RAM. Um, it's possible the processor works. I'm not going to mess around with the processor and the motherboard. I'm just going to end up tossing those. Um, but the screen, I imagine, still functions. So I'm going to be taking the screen off with the intent to sell that. And the keyboard's a little messed up. It's kind of sticky. You got a little, the B key is kind of stuck in there. Um, but I imagine the touchpad may as well uh, still work. So um, I'm going to be hanging on to that. And also the hard drive, I'm, I'm going to check out the hard drive and see if that still functions as well. And, uh, and trying to make something work with this laptop, or at least show you how to take one apart, because that's also really fun, even, even if you're not doing anything with the parts. So let's get to that. When you're doing this, you want to have a little screwdriver set of some kind so that you can make sure you can take care of all those teeny tiny little screws that you're going to come across. Uh, I picked this up. It's called iWork. Um, it's actually not associated with any Apple products as far as I know. And I got that for five bucks at Fry's and it's a pretty sweet little set. It comes with all of these different tips. It's got star, star tips as well as uh, flathead and Phillips. And uh, it's pretty cool. So let's get stibbit a start in here. The, well, it's kind of nice because when you're just scrapping something for parts, you don't have to have anywhere near as much concern as you would if, say, you're actually intending on putting it back together. Uh, I'm not going to be putting it back together, so I'm not going to try to keep track of my screws, something that I'm not particularly good at. So you just start taking off panels. And they kind of label some of the stuff around here on some of the Dells to make it convenient for you. This is M, then you've got the B screws. They should all be the same type of screws, etc., etc. Here is your RAM, and this is DDR 333 MHz PC 2700U. Um, just offhand, I don't have any specific use for that personally. So I'm not going to be hanging on to that um, for myself. But uh, when you're taking out the RAM, they're going to have these little clips in the side of it. And on laptops, when you pull those clips, the RAM will just pop up and you can kind of take it out. And that's easy enough. Then what's under here? This is the, well, it's like the video card dealio. Um, you may notice these little cables that are plugged into it. Um, that takes the signal to the monitor. Um, this one's being a little mean to me here. And so those, you can just kind of pull those loose. They're just sort of clipped in there like snaps on pants or something. And, uh, and I don't know if there's much I'm going to be able to do with this either, so we'll, we will set that aside. 
and look at what's in here. See, you just screw with me. My phone's convinced that it's got to set off an alarm for me, but uh, all it's doing is getting in the way of my work. So in here, this is the hard drive, and I, uh, I will get to that a little bit later here. I'm just going to take out the rest of these screws. Okay, well I got a couple of screws here that aren't playing nicely. And they don't seem to be wanting to come out, so I'm just going to kind of leave those alone right now. Something that I didn't uh, mention yet is the optical drive here. And it looks like that's got a little bit of beverage spilled on it. So uh, I'd be wary of this. I'm not sure if that works. It probably does, but then again, it may have been burned out in the first place. Um, in fact, if I remember this computer, I. I think that's, that might be guaranteed to be true, but uh, yes, yes, after you get those screws out, you want to just start kind of prying everything apart. Um, I'm going to flip over to a flat head here and just kind of start wedging it into all the fun little cracks across the computer. And uh, normally, I would be really careful about this if I cared about putting the computer back together, but in this case I really don't, so I just want the thing open and I'm going to be real forceful prying it apart. Look, it's the inside of a computer. in some cases this little top panel is going to be sort of held on separately it looks like it's got a little clip right there for taking this bit off and that is out and underneath here you can see this this cord that goes up to the monitor and that's that one that it ultimately parts of it come from over there and that's the cord that you need to be able to get out in, uh, in order to remove the monitor and so before you're able to do that you have to remove the keyboard in this case it looks like there are two screws mounting the keyboard There we go, keyboard out. And as I said, this, this thing's kind of janked out. Um, it did have Coke spilled directly on it, so I'm not gonna be using that. But I do wanna get my hands in on this touchpad. And I think it's gonna take me a moment to be able to actually get to that. The monitor, the screen here is going to be connected by a couple of screws that mount onto these hinges. These hinges run up the side of the screen and so there we go. Kind of had a little brain fart moment. You just unscrew those and screw often got one on one hinge, sometimes two, and it's got one on this side and then two on the other side. So you remove those, drop them inside the computer if you feel so bold. That's exactly what I just did. And then you can just sort of lift that out. And then the monitor cable 
should come loose pretty easily. And here it seems to be oddly connected to something else as well, and I don't know what. I'm not familiar with that. I guess it's a ground, but in any case, that is off. Screen gone. So there you go, that's how to take the screen off of a laptop, or at least this laptop. Most of them are gonna be pretty much similar. And to get the top of this casing off, we just need to take out these last two screws that are hidden inside here. Or it looks like it might be three screws. Three indeed. I like to try to avoid throwing screws wildly in the air, so I got that off and this is removed. And then you can see the uh, touchpad is just contained by a couple of screws here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove those. Way to go, Dell. Yep, this is not what I'm used to. Um, so in this case, it looks like I'm not going to be able to get to the touchpad because it's like wedged inside of this little plastic bit here, and uh, and I'm really not I'm really not sure how one would would remove that. So I'm just going to let that alone since it's possible the touchpad's all janked out anyway, and I doubt much of anybody would pay much for it. So, gone. Here we go. Heat sink and fan. I bet I bet there's somebody out there that would want this. So you got one, two. I did it in the wrong order initially. Don't tell anybody. Three and four. One, two. Three. And four. And if you caught my other video about fixing your fan, uh, you could see that point where I blundered about discussing the the cross pattern that you use when removing your heat sink and fan. And this is an example of a computer that does not make it easy to get to, because as you see, you'd have to open up the entire top of the computer you have to take the keyboard out in order to get to it and this is kind of gross looking it's got some dust and hair and stuff on it um, but that's the the heat sink which uh, I can probably put that up on eBay and then you've got your fan here connected as well and that is about to be disconnected and removed Looks like it's held on with two screws here. Also dusty, presumed to be working. And I probably want to clean that off before trying to sell it. But there you go, heat sink and fan. That's how you take it off in this computer. And then we've got, this is the central processing unit right here that was under the heat sink. And um, I don't care too much about that. That's pretty much everything that I do care about that's on here. I think I would have to say the rest of this is all motherboard.